Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dual Hearts, episode 29. We are back at Sleepy Hill to pick up the 8th orb. Now that we have the 8th key in Hannah's Dream, of course, can't do anything in this game anymore without running into her. Clingiest freaking side quest ever. Needs to know what we're doing all the time. Brilliant. Can't believe we didn't cover that in the hours that we spent working on her multiple iterations of her dream. Can I go now? I have treasure to collect. Bumble's dying from that pendant curse thing. Great. Well, we've got another partner. I mean, we've already got one load tagging along, so what's one more? It's not like the ruins are dangerous. Check out this first puzzle. They were kind of designed for uh, nine-year-olds or whatever. <laughs> Check out his small talk. That's great. He's such a braggart. I guess we've never actually seen him interact casually with people, except briefly to move cutscenes along. Oh boy! Her too. Wonderful. This is a fantastic cutscene. Keep in mind, of course, Shafon's never met Val, she's only met Nancy, her barely disguised iteration from the hotel. At least she admits it, she just came to annoy us. Wonderful. Just wonderful. See, of course she's Nancy, you have to be a complete idiot to fall for that disguise. See, thanks a lot, Stompy. Thanks for having my back there. Do your pose, do your stomp. That was actually kind of funny. Poison arrow. Reflexes. Clearly they hadn't been watching me play him. Oh, holla freaking Lilia. Val leaves, she takes Chiffon with her. Of course, you'd think that now that that particular cutscene is over, that we'd, you know, go back to the dungeon, but we actually follow Val and Chiffon, which is kind of the exact opposite of what I want to do. It's a moderately touching cutscene, though, so I'll try to keep the snark to a minimum until it's done. Oh god, she has a bugged out expression too. I don't think I've ever actually seen that until this point. She's got all the mannerisms. It must be heart. <laughs> Guess we can't punt Valor Chiffon if we punt Bumble. She looks kind of cute at the end there. Anyway, back to business. That only took three minutes. Yeah, we don't care. Good riddance. You have the right idea, I guess. I and mean, we do have kind of have a world-threatening catastrophe to take care of. Ugh! We will never get this orb. At least Yuri made it inside the temple. That's kind of an achievement for him. It's a dessert menu. That's all. The Black Calamity is like death by chocolate. One of those brownie things. Alright, I'm done. Fine, whatever. You'd think that Bumble would have some input on this, considering he was sent here to stop this from happening in the first place, but nope, he just dances. Check this out, you can walk over this. I actually had no idea until this particular trip to the temple. Either that, or I did walk over it and forget. That sounds like something that I would do. Anyway, now that we've, we're done with the myriad interruptions, let's get in the green door and pick up the green orb. It's not even that exciting, because it's an item we already have. I mean, it's cool because we can dual-wield hammers, eventually. Once we get it. But considering I like to keep my items diverse, I don't think I'd do that for the remainder of the game until the optional areas. Anyway, here's the puzzle. It doesn't have anything to do with anything green. There's no like buying puzzles or anything. It's just a simple block puzzle. In each of the rooms, you will have to toss one of these little metal blocks close to the ledge and allow and let it give you a boost. Get stuck in the wall. That is a mandatory part of the puzzle. To the door. 
All right, this is a small iteration up from the first one. We have two of these blocks. The first one is stuck in this little rut. We can't put the first one on top of the second one. I should say the one, we can't put the one out of the rut and the one in the rut, that won't give us enough height. So we have to just move the first one onto the upper ledge and then the second one on top of it. It's not a very like neat solution to this puzzle. You have to fall off. That's a requirement. That was totally not by accident. Sigh. I don't know why that last spike ball is up there. You can't actually hit it when you climb the wedge. Whatever. This was a little more aggravating. We've got this big block, a big one up there, and a really tiny little block. The tiny little block is the only thing stopping you, or should say, a block of that height is all you need on top of the big block to get to the last ledge. Obviously we don't need it to get to the second ledge, or I should say the second floor. But we can't actually throw the little block onto the bigger block, and we can't jump. So the solution is fairly obvious. Throw the second block onto the first block, and then from the first block, throw the second block onto the giant one. Of course, I put it too close and it didn't work. So the solution is to push the block when I actually can get off of it and in a direction which allows me to push the block, because you can't push it against the wall. So I... This could have gone a little better. All right, that should be enough. You don't want to get it too far away, or else we won't be able to reach it with our toss. There we go. Now we can throw the second block onto the second floor, and then the process begins one more time, although this time I think I have a little bit more sense of distance. Of course, I'll have to hit in the face with a spike ball twice. The second time it worked out for the best, though, because the block just landed on my head again. So what were we saying about those lightning reflexes in that previous cutscene? All right, so it went a little bit more smoothly. Just toss this up, up on top of the block. Not a bad puzzle, I, I would say. And uh, I guess it scales nicely from the first version to the third version. In my opinion. Okay, that's all that. Into the hall, the Call of Treasure Green. Pick up the green orb, the eighth orb. Nothing much to say here because it is, in fact, just the hammer and we've been using it for multiple dungeons now. But nice to have the official Gen's hammer. Gen is a carpenter. I believe he's from Japanese mythology, but I'm not entirely certain. There's an NES game called Gen the Carpenter, and he also appears as a character in Suikoden, which is, of course, based off of a Chinese story. So, but I'm not sure what the actual myth is, if it exists, or if it's just a really common name for carpenters or something. Or if it was just a reference to the game. I have no idea. It's not an item we're going to be seeing very often, because I have no reason to use it. The Mystic Hammer is in fact a direct upgrade. Let's get out of here. There's no cutscenes in the way out of the Hall of Treasure, but there is one more just like a couple of keys ago as we exit the temple, or as we exit this little branch of the temple. Check out Bumble's Pendant. Remember what the Queen said way back when we encountered, or I should say when Bumble encountered her previously. Yep, it's not the master of observation. It's like freaking Batman. Thanks for the reminder, that's true. You think he would just tell Stompy? Of course, I think we sort of caused this problem by going on so many side quests and wasting so much time when we were supposed to be progressing with the story. Talk about bipolar, look at that. He goes right back to dancing as soon as the cutscene ends. It's hilarious. Anyway, brief stop over before we continue with the plot. I know I just complained about that, considering that Bumble's about to die from taking too much time. But we can go back to Meg's dream. You may recall that we only picked up one collectible, and she had three, if you remember from the status screen at the start of the dream. Now that her dreams return to normal, and Hannah's back in the house, we can pick up the other two. Check it out. Just, just looks just like their house, more or less. Except slightly different. I don't know why it doesn't look exactly like their house. HP up, and Golvisamons talk to her. This is almost offensive. She's just sitting in her house, in her dreams, thinking about cooking dinner. Feminism has not come very far on Sano Island. Anyway, once again, we're back at the beach. Of course we're back at the beach. Everything happens at the beach in this game. This one, oddly, does not happen automatically. You actually have to talk to these two. Emma and Gregor. Gregor is totally not a pirate. Well, this is new. Gregor's fine. Emma's emo, but Gregor's the one who has the key. Spoiler alert. Not a pirate. 
totally not a pirate. I think he's even got an anchor tattoo on his shoulder. I never noticed that until just now. Whee! Look at him dance. Note that his pendant stays red, which is actually pretty cool. Also, Gregor takes the ladder away, so you can't actually enter his dream manually now. It's kind of odd. Anyway, there's Emma. As you can imagine, similar to Meg and Hannah's dream, we have to enter Gregor's dream through the back door. What's well, wrong? Yep. See, this is actually kind of interesting. Remember that Chiffon saw through Val's pseudo-disguise really easily, and also Emma does recognize that Gregor was probably a pirate. And of course Stompy eventually figures it out because he was an adventurer too, and you think that he would have heard about things like famous pirates. People who are reasonably genre savvy, I suppose. Anyway, let's talk to her again. We can't. She's not asleep yet. We can't actually go in her dream. What we have to do is come back at night. I left that in because when I turned around, Bumble slammed into the wall, which is not intentional. I feel a little bad. If he's gonna get hurt. I want to do it manually on purpose by punting him for rewards. Let's come back at night. There we go. I actually went back to the hotel because I assumed that she would be in room 103 where she normally sleeps, but no, she just passes out outside Gregor's little cliffside bachelor pad, which is kind of cool, I guess. Let's do it. Let's go in. And then Gregor. Again, Emma's dream, like Meg's dream, is more or less the vestibule to Gregor's dream. But there's a little bit more to do, not all of which we can accomplish right now. There's seven collectibles. Most of them we cannot get during our first run. We have to fly, and like usual, the game denies us the ability to do so on our first trip through the dream. There is a gauntlet pad. We can't lift it until we get the final holy instrument after Gregor's dream, and the flight pad is under it, just like in Chiffon's dream. So there's one or two things we can pick up. The other problem is that Gregor's dream is connected to Emma's dream, through the ocean, meaning as soon as you fall off of any of these floating platforms, you immediately enter Gregor's Dream and you have to go back to Emma's Dream manually. Which is kind of a pain, considering the, the amount of flying and platforming you have to do to complete this level. There's one thing we can do right now without flying, and that's a repeat of a puzzle from Yuri's Dream. We get to see the O and X platforms, but the O's and the X's disappear before it starts. Thankfully I got this right in my first try, so I didn't have to cut and recut or whatever. We pick up a gold decimon. I think at some point I tried to get one of the other items. You'll notice there's stored little water bubbles, but I don't believe you can actually reach one of them until you can fly. So let's uh, just dive for it anyway, just to make sure. And when we fail to get it, we will immediately enter Gregor's Dream. So we will do that, pick up the final key on the next episode of Let's Play Dual Hearts. See you then.